Hey, what's up everybody? Ernie here with Wicked Awesome Gifts and today we are going to do a tutorial on powder painting uh, your engravings. Now I've done one uh, before <clears throat> but it was kind of a quick rush job out in the shop one day in the middle of the summer when it was really hot so um, if you want to uh, learn how to do this and things like this then stick around and watch the video we will get right into it all right welcome back so you decided to stick around and watch the video cool so i did this little guy on mdf and um, I did this, uh, this is just a cheap Home Depot uh, eighth inch tempered hardboard, which is MDF with a special coating. So, so we did this guy and um, we did this one. Now this, uh, these next three pieces are going to be pieces for my new series that will be coming. Uh, I've mentioned it a few times throughout the videos, but uh, when I edit that, some of that might get um, cut out. We'll see. But uh, this is the no wood left behind. So basically, I have a lot of live edge stuff. Uh, the point is, I have a lot of live edge, so we're going to be doing a lot of that this uh, spring and summer, and um, especially on the big machines. But this machine cut. So I do. I uh, have a video of that where this piece was actually this long and it was kind of bowed up and I didn't like that so I decided to cut it and the Creality Falcon 2 40 watt laser back there behind me it cut it uh, one pass uh, one time another one was two passes um, I either didn't have it level or something, I don't know, but, uh, it, it cuts it, so it's really freaking cool. This is part of the No Wood Left Behind series, so whenever I do my Live Edge, um, pieces, I end up with scraps and bits and pieces, and I am going to start saving them. I was already making some, and I've been selling them throughout the year, and, uh, they, they, believe it or not, they sell really well. They're just like, uh... I got the stationary camera now, but they sit on the desk, like, pretend this is your desk, right? And uh, it just sits perfectly. So they're, they're thick enough. They're basically little desk ornaments you can put on your desk at work or at home or whatever. 99% um, of them are going to be military, patriotic, theme-based uh, materials, and um, hence no wood left behind. And um, what I'm considering doing uh, I'm gonna do it I just haven't uh, done it yet I need to reach out to the Wounded Warrior Project people and uh, see how they go about doing donations do they want them like quarterly yearly monthly how do they want them because what I want to do is start donating the proceeds of the profits to these pieces that I sell uh, to either them or some kind of missing soldier group or something like that so um, so anyway, stay tuned, and I'm also going to make a series on the channel for that. So every time I make something, I'll display it up. And on the back, it's going to have my logo, and it's also going to have the title. I don't know if this is blurry or not, but uh, it's going to have the title and the number. I've started cataloging these um, to keep track of what they are. So if it catches on and becomes something cool, people will have a numbered keepsake, right? This one is... No wood left behind, number 16, U.S. Constitution, small. So a little small Constitution, 1776 thing. And um, this one is number 15. This one is on cherry. Man, this it's so much heavier than this pine. This is, this is a pine. Uh, but this cherry is dense. It's heavy. But check that out. This is another one we're going to do in the, in the tutorial. Um, this is uh, how to show you how to do multicolors. So we have blue and black. And this is on a nice, big, thick piece of cherry that was uh, leftovers from one of the signs I did for a customer. So no wood left behind, right? We use everything. 
this one, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. It's number 14, but this one was also on the pine with the nice bluing to it. I don't like the glossy paint, but I did one glossy anyway for the video so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, some people might like it. Um, I personally don't care for it a whole lot. But um, I also think it might be a little plain. So I might put something around here. I might put some FAFO around the top. or you know, I, might, I might put something up there. I don't know. We'll, we'll still work on this. This one's not complete yet. And uh, so those three we do, uh, four we do in the tutorial. This one, I don't think I have video of it. Oh, here's another piece of cherry. This one's a bigger one. And I did not color this because I'm still on the fence of how I want to do it. But as you see, they're all different sizes, um, different shapes. These are not planned. The only planning that I will do is if I have to trim it. So this one was trimmed, like I said, it was this long. And um, I couldn't really find a long image that I liked, so I found this and I just trimmed it to fit. So I will trim them to fit an image, but I'm not gonna go grab a piece of wood and cut it up into little bits and bobs like these and go, oh look, more scraps. No, these are legitimate scraps from projects um, that I did. So um, normally they would just get thrown in the trash, but we don't do that here. We keep the wood and use it. So there you go. And um, before we get into the actual making and tutorial part of it, I just wanted to throw out a few bits of conversation because I'm trying not to talk a lot during the actual making of the stuff. There's still me talking in there a little bit, but most of it's just going to be cut, spliced of the project so you can see it. And I may dub over it. I don't know. We'll see if I have anything to talk about. <coughs> Excuse me. When when viewing it back. So, um... Oh, we got to go over the materials, too. So, this is what I use. Um, I got a couple of them here. We got black. Two forms of black, blue, and a white. The white, I didn't do any today because I don't like it. Um, maybe I need a different kind of wood and now that I say that I really want to get this video up and out so I might do another video on powder paint with the Wingate. Um, I don't think I have a piece handy. I do not. So it's in one of my other videos. Um, it's a really dark wood from Africa and it's called a, they call it like a faux ebony. And I don't have any handy. But, anyway, oh, talk about that in a minute too. Um, anyway, uh, this is walnut, so I might, I've got some little pieces here. This is just random designs I did last year. I just thought it looked cool like a domino, but it's nice quarter inch thick walnut. There's little holes there, so I might go ahead and put some white in there. But, anyway, the point is I think that maybe the white will look good with the dark wood. I didn't try it. I tried it on plywood, and uh, I think I tried it on cherry, but it might look good on a dark wood, like the walnut or the wingay, and the wingay is actually darker than this, so I, I might I might go ahead and do that for you guys. So um, the other pieces that I grabbed real quick were the other were the ends of the uh, uh, pieces that I cut. I told you I cut with the the forty watt laser, and uh, so I. It cut through these big old 19 millimeter pieces, guys. These three quarter inch. Uh, these are pine. Um, it's it's dried, kiln dried, been dry for like a year. That uh, my sawmill guy gave me because um, he loves the bluing that's going on. So I'm making him some signs with these, and I had some scraps left over from those. Uh, so this is easier to cut. It's a soft wood. Um, I think it had to do two passes on the cherry. No, I'm lying to you. One, not the cherry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was the cherry, and I also caught some spruce with it too. But the spruce is a lot more dense. So, anyway, the materials we have here is the pro. This is called Protec powder paint, and we're getting reflections off the monitors. But I will put this uh, link in the description where I got this from. You can Google it. It's in several places. And a lot of people try to take your money. 
This one is black. You have regular gloss. This is the gloss black. But they're just little tiny things like this, right? So it seems expensive. Like, oh my god, I'm going to pay $15 for a little tiny thing. But guys, I use it a lot. And I haven't even got through half of it, right? I did waste a lot of blue on a project I was trying to do with a lake. Um, you don't want to do these on things you have to cover a lot of surface area. You want to mask and regular paint that. This is more ideal for smaller smaller things. Um, or smaller areas to get into with the, with the paint. But um, So this is the Pro-Tech. I don't know why I kept calling it Tro-Tech before. But it's Pro-Tech Powder Paint. And uh, it's made for lures and jigs. I got it from a tackle shop. I kept Googling and Googling. Couldn't find it anywhere for under like 20 bucks a little thing. I'm, I'm not paying $20 for this, right? That's crazy. So I did find it, and I want to say it was 8 or $9 per thing. Um, to me, that's not bad. And like I said, I've I've used the heck out of this black, right? And uh, I've still got over half of it. So a little bit goes a long way, which we talked about that in the in the latter parts of, of the video when uh, we're, we're utilizing it. So... Um, I'll put the link in the description. This is the powder paint that I use. There are others out there. There's a lot out there. Do whatever you want. You guys are grown adults. Do what you want. This is what I use. Um, and I actually got the idea from Steve from uh, a YouTuber. I don't know the guy. I just watch a lot of YouTubers. And um, from the channel, Steve makes everything. He has no idea I'm even plugging his channel. So um, go there, say hi, give a shout. And uh, he makes a lot of cool stuff. And what I like about him is he he speaks more eloquently than me. He speaks a little bit better than me. Um, he's he's less of an asshole than me. But you can see in his head that he's thinking what I'm saying, right? So I think he and I we're on the same wavelength a lot of times. He 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 just cuts through the BS. If you don't like what he says, you don't like what he does. Fine, go do what you want. Go do it your own way. You're grown. So. Um, that's the same mentality I got. But anyway, he makes a lot of really cool stuff, and he was doing a lesson on powder paint, and that's where I got the idea for this. I also agree with him 100% in that we need to start passing good information off to people, not bad information. And all the craze right now, or it's not as popular right now, but it was for a little while ago, is people are doing this on their laser. Stop it. All right, get, go to Harbor Freight or wherever and get you a heat gun. This cost $10 at Harbor Freight. It was not expensive. It's got two modes, low and high, basic ass heat gun, okay? We use this in the video. Um, what people are doing is they'll mark off their lasers, their projects, and they'll, they'll, they'll laser, they'll do the engraving and they'll take it out, clean it, blow it off, do whatever they want to do it, put shellac on it, whatever, and then they'll put it back in the laser, and they'll put the, then they'll put the paint powder on it, put it back in the laser, turn the air off, turn the laser down, and run it again. And then they'll screw up, so they have to do it again, then they'll screw up again, because think about how many times you're going to have to go back and forth to find the perfect heat temperature setting of your laser beam to melt the paint, to make it liquid so that it turns into paint and then gets in the wood and does what it's supposed to do but doesn't blow all over the damn place or you know you're not shooting through going making a bigger hole in your engraving it's just stupid right and not only that yeah I mean, i'm saying stupid sorry if i'm hurting your feelings out there some of you but you're wasting tube life on your laser a lot of these people doing this are co2 laser people you know, those are like light bulbs, right, guys? They have a lifespan. The more you use your laser for dumb shit, then the more you're going to be buying new CO2 tubes because they're going to burn out faster. Sorry, I'm sounding like a jerk, but I mean, come on, guys. I'm, I'm being funny about it, but... Ugh. You know, it's the right tool for the right job, okay? You know, yeah, I could pound a nail with a screwdriver gonna take me a long damn time okay it's probably a little smarter to go get a hammer it's probably a little smarter to go get a heat gun to do this if you want to really do the powder paint use a damn heat gun that's what they're for so the very short version of how to do this in my opinion the most 
intelligent way is you engrave something. We'll use this as an example. You do your engraving and you take it out. Then you get your little powder paint, you pour it on there. And we're going to do all this in the video. But you get your little squeegee, you squeegee it off of there. You heat it up and you take your sanding block and you sand it. Or if you got a, you know, I use an orbital when I'm outside. So, all right, and, and that's it. Okay, it's not hard. It, it's, um, it gets, it, it can get a little harder when you're trying to do multiple colors and you got to mask things off and things like that. Um, one thing I wish that I had done on, um, I think on the Jesus one. Yeah, definitely on the Jesus. And uh, I didn't do this and I wish I did. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, the storm pooper. I wish I would have painted it white first. The whole thing white. Because stormtroopers are white, right? And then um, masked it off. And then engraved it. And then did the powder paint. That would have been so much cooler. Uh, one thing you have to be careful though. When you do. And this is what kind of stopped me. When you do. Uh, just because I didn't have the time tonight to mess with it. If you do that ahead of time. You run the risk. If you're exposing it too long with the heat. Of bubbling up the old paint. So you really want to let that dry. So you let it dry for a day or so. Not just an hour or two. And uh, then maybe if you're careful enough, you won't burn up, bubble up, melt the old paint. So you got to be really careful with that. But um, it can be done. You can paint it first. And this one um, I didn't do, but I was going to do as an example between what happens if you go too shallow in your engraving versus the right depth. This is the right depth. That's why this one looks really good. And... Um, this one would not come out really well, and I, I just ran out of time because I, I, I spent six hours making these little video clips. Um, the video is not going to be that long, guys. I've spent more time talking now. I can't believe we're already 18 minutes. But if you don't go deep enough, like I did on Storm Pooper here, if you see down there, it's and when I sanded it, it started to come off. Now this is a test project. I got my settings and stuff on the back. I got little hangers. I'm gonna hang it on my bathroom door when, when the wife goes boop. And uh, <laughs> so you know, it's just it's for me. So it, it doesn't matter that it's messed up. But um, yeah, so there you go. That's the short and skinny of my opinion on how to do this. Um, I thought it might be good to talk about it before the video. Now, most of you probably already skipped and had to go find the video. I'm like, where's the damn thing at? So, for those of you that like to listen to me ramble, um, that is all good information there. Hopefully, it, you find it useful. And um, I think that's it. We went over the tools, right? Get you these. I got this Harbor Freight pack of three for a dollar um, for scraping the paint off. Um, the heat gun um any any material you want to do it on the wood anyway uh and yeah that's it so the paint <sighs> tired all right so there you go let me um fast forward and rewind back into past ernie then we'll do back to the future ernie and i'll put all this stuff together and 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 there you go so I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you learn something, and I hope you find it useful. If not, put it in the comments below and let me know why. Um, all these engravings were done on the Creality Falcon 2, 40 watt. Uh, stepped down to, uh, they have an option to step it down to a 22 watt or 20-ish, something like that. It's called They call it precise mode. It kills two of the diodes in there, and it's a, a weaker thing for getting more precise. So all these engravings were done with that, and also any cutting and um, cleaning up of the edges was done on that as well. So that laser handled all of this. I didn't have to go bust open the CO2 to do these. That thing's a cutter, guys. It's It cuts. So, you know, the engraving is whatever. It's about on par with the rest of them, but the cutting, whew. If you want to do projects where you cut, and that's what this one is. I'm making this one. I haven't finished it yet. It's a beer stein mug that's not glued. <laughs> um, you know, this is all cut. Yeah, I engraved the little edge here, but it's all cut, all done with some high-quality MDF from Artisan uh, Workshop. 
and uh, I'll put a link for them below in the description because this is wood even though it's nothing to do with the powder paint but I'd mentioned them so I'll throw their link in there and um, yeah so it's a cutter so it's a damn good cutting machine I am so impressed with the cutting on that I wish I would have had that before I bought my X tool I would have bought that 100% and, and I've only had it for a couple days now um, but god I would have I struggled so hard god did I struggle you throw a sheet of plywood down and I say sheet loosely because it's the X tool it's you know 16 by 20 you throw it down and uh, you try you're like oh I'm gonna make 50 ornaments right or 50 key tags it'll all fit you pull it up and there's three sometimes that thing was a nightmare to cut with this thing has been a freaking breeze I love it so um, I love the cutting on it said engraving is whatever but the cutting is great so I'll put a link for that down below if you're interested in that I have an affiliate link I uh, use that um, I do get a commission off of the sale if you buy one and um, I don't know what it is like 6% or something I don't know but uh it's it's there and it's at no extra cost to you. It doesn't you, you don't have to pay any more for using that link. Um, I think I, don't know, I gotta ask them. I don't know if you get a discount or not. So for using the link, that'd be cool if you did. You should. Um, but uh, yeah. So all right, that's enough rambling. We're 23 minutes into this, so I might edit some of this down. 23 minutes is long. So um, anyway, enjoy the video, guys. Make sure you comment down below and hit that like button. Thanks. Okay, looks like we are live record live <laughs> recording here. Got my little workstation set up on the desk with the uh, piece of spruce we cut yesterday. <clears throat> so this one is a little design I did here. I hate not be able to see the camera. This I got the little stationary one, but. Um, I can't see, so I hope this is in view. Um, I marked on here where it is so I can keep it in the area. But anyway, here's the first one we're going to do. It's uh, eighth inch MDF, little Jesus thing I put on there and uh, engraved this at 12,000 speed, 80 power, cut it, 1200 power at excuse me 1200 speed 100 power two passes uh this is the temperate hardboard from home depot not the good stuff i got the other day so we'll do some more projects with the good stuff but this is just something i already had cut out um in preparation for this so what we're going to do i mean it's not a bad engraving right looks good uh if you really wanted to do it better you could paint the whole piece beforehand and then um mask it off with the masking uh whatever kind of tape or masking you use then engrave it and then do what we're doing and then when you peel it off you'll have the background won't be this uh mdf color it'll be something different i should have done it in white i think that would have looked really cool if i'd have done this in white so too little too late uh might do it again and have that one to show but for now we're just going to do this because it's just more of a tutorial so <clears throat> Here's how I do it. There's a million ways to do everything, right? Always is, but and I'll I'll do a better, uh, clearer thing on all the tools being used at the beginning and then end of the thing. But we're using this uh, ProTech powder paint. I got it from a fishing bait uh, or fishing supply store online. I'll put the link in the description. It's what they use to powder coat lures. It's the best stuff I've found. This was recommended. Um, from another, I was watching a YouTuber named Steve from Steve Makes Everything. He's got a good YouTube. You want to check him out. Um, he recommended this stuff. I believe it was him that used this. And uh, I've used it and loved it. So I'm never going to use anything else. Um, make sure you got one of... I mean, you can use anything, but it, it helps to have one of these things. Just because uh, it's better. So, for smoothing it out. All right, so anyway, let's get this going. I don't want this to be too long. So I, I use a spoon. We take a spoon and we put it here all over the design. 
you do not have to be careful with this part, guys, because you're going to sand it anyway, right? Oh, you don't want to put a whole lot because then you just end up being wasteful. But uh, so stuff ain't exactly cheap. It's not you know crazy expensive either. But again, you don't want to waste it if you don't have to. Um, what I normally do is I put a piece of metal underneath. Uh, that way I can just scrape it all off into my thing. But since I got this piece of wood I didn't even think about it so actually I should probably remedy that hold on let me uh, it, it, at least in the in the area of cleanup right so uh, yeah it's just all gonna get inside the grooves of the wood and I don't want to mess with that uh, excuse me so I put a piece of metal under here that's going to make cleanup a lot easier all right, so once you uh, get it on there, you're just going to take your little deal. Am I in the right spot? Yeah. You're just going to take your little deal here and smooth it over. You don't have to put any real pressure on it. The idea is just to get it to fall inside the engraving. And if you're using the squeegee thing, uh, one that's not ruined, it will... Um, you know, it'll stay flat, so you don't have to worry about uh, missing any. So, you gotta get the letters here. I don't think I did the letters really deep. Um, it's kind of why I wanted to do this one too, because I'm not sure if it's deep enough. So, it'll be a good example of how it looks if you don't go deep enough. But there we go. So, you just get it on there, you just swipe it over. It's not a big deal, right? And, um, you can put a little more pressure on it if you want to get off the excess and let the excess fall down onto the metal and then just set it aside and you don't want to bump it or blow on it or anything like that because um, you'll get some of the paint out of your engraving so it doesn't matter if this stuff gets a little bit dirty you know it's whatever um, so once you do that, what I do is I'll, sometimes I'll use a piece of paper too, not always a piece of metal. A re view here, I can't see. Shoot, no. All right, hopefully that was all in view. So let me just zoom out a little bit. There we go. All right, so Basically, it's, I mean, I shouldn't have to explain how to clean up, right? But you just take it and scrape it right back into the into the thing. Not a big deal. No fuss, no muss. And blow it all over your desk so it gets inside your keyboard. All right. Now we got that. Sometimes I will go ahead and take a cloth and wipe it off if I'm using the metal. If I'm using paper or cardboard, it doesn't matter. A lot of times out in the shop, I will use cardboard. Then you can fold it over and crease it. And then it kind of acts like a little pathway for uh, the powder to fall down in. So there we go. Now we're clean. The reason we do that is because we don't want to heat up the paint and then paint our metal. I mean, you can if you want. Who cares? But I don't want to. So, okay. So we take our little piece back here. And let's make sure we're in view. Yep. And... Now, let me zoom out for this because I want to illustrate where to hold the heat gun. Oh, pressing the wrong things. Just when I think I have a good setup. Okay, so um, I just have the standard heat gun. Again, I'll go over all the tools in the beginning. But when you first start, you don't want to stick the heat gun right here and start blowing because you will blow the stuff out, right? Uh, you can just use a low setting, doesn't need to be high at all. Normally what I'll do, and I might go out of the frame here, I'll hold it up about six or eight inches and let it start heating up and it'll start to get warm and then as it gets warm, I'll come down, go over it like this and then I'll come down. So as it starts to melt, and you'll be able to tell by looking at it, as it starts to melt, then you can get close without fear of it blowing all over the place. But, 
Um, and I'll talk more about this method versus a laser uh, later, but um, or might be earlier depending on how I edit the video. So let's just go ahead and get this done. I do like to inspect it with a flashlight. Um, light in here is not great anyway, but this helps me to see if the paint is starting to bubble or boil or anything like that. And you'll notice that here at the bottom, we missed a little spot. So you can just go back and fill that in and then heat it up again. And there's a little spot in the middle below his hair so we'll add a little bit more and one thing you will have to be careful about too it's not a whole lot you can do about it but you can heat it and go the other way but as you start to heat it sometimes it will bend shoot there we go um, the wood will start to bow so you gotta be careful of that and if you go and try to push on it to straighten it you can crack the paint so the best thing sometimes is to flip it over, heat it, and let gravity do its thing. But that's, I mean, that's in there. It's painted. It's good. But it's kind of thin right here. And I want to hit this spot down there. So we're going to fix that up. Um, you can't tell on the camera, I don't think. But you can see where there's still room. Uh, the paint melts down into the engraving. And there is still room to even put more. There's, it's, it's down in there. You can feel it. So, um, and then later on when you sand it, you want it to obviously be smooth. So, all right, let's add some more paint. Yep, it did. Oh, there's a streak right there. I don't like that. Sometimes it's good to inspect it because right here you probably can't tell, but there is a streak right there. I don't like that at all. That means I pushed too hard with the yellow thing. And if you, I mean, these things are, you know, plastic, they will bend. So if you push too hard, um, you can make marks in it. And then sometimes those marks will. Um, translate into the final product and you can see them it does not take long to clean that off because it doesn't permeate down inside oh I forgot to say too one thing um, some people do not everyone but I've seen some people do this um, they put shellac on first let that thoroughly dry and you know shellac only takes five ten minutes to dry anyway if that long and then they do the paint process some people say it helps it not bleed um i've only I think i've only had one instance where it bled and that was on plywood so i don't know that i had any really bleed but it's just an option that's there if you hadn't thought about it just put some shellac on there first and then uh add the paint and that will help prevent that from happening. Alright, so let's give this one more go. One thing you will need to watch out for is watch for it to start boiling. If you leave it in one spot too long, it will actually bubble and boil. And it makes for a yucky looking paint. But you see, now that I got it good and melted in there, I can get real close to it. And really give it, give it the heat. Makes for a better paint. This is something that laser is not gonna do. And this is only taking me a long time because I'm doing a video. If I wasn't doing a video, it would not take me this long at all. So, there you go. That's kind of what your final product looks before you clean it up. 
looks looks like. So this is normal. And I wish I took a before a good before picture of this one, but I don't think I did. So now I'm going to let it cool because it's really hot and it kind of bowed a little bit. So I'm going to turn it over and heat it and just see if gravity will bring that down a little bit so it's not so bowed. And then I'm going to sand it. So you don't need to watch me sand it. So after I'm done sanding it, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right. See you in a bit. Okay, folks. So we're back. And here is the final product after I cleaned up the bottom and sanded it. As we see, it looks pretty good. Way better than other kinds of paint. And let me put some light on it for you. This is kind of looks like, and then I'll get up close so you can see the texture. I took some pictures of it too, so I'll splice in some photos. But as you can see, if it's focusing here, it's a nice, even texture. And there you go. So if you notice also, the words are not as dark. So those were not as deep. So it's a good uh, representation of what happens if we don't engrave it as deep as we should. So on to the next one. Okay, so real quick, um, one of the cool things that, uh, I'm a little bored here and I'm gonna be up on the table in a second, but I just wanted to show you one of the cool things about going deep on these engravings is that you can really go to town sanding it to cleaning it up, right? I mean, I've been sitting here just sanding it and sanding it because this piece was a little warped. So I was trying to uh, get a little bit level because I'm doing it all by hand today because I'm not going outside. So um, as I was doing it, I was like, man, I should have showed this on the video. So, um, I mean, you see all the dust, right? And it's still a nice deep engraving. So that's one of the cool things uh, about going nice and deep on things like this that you know you're gonna paint fill. You can sand it up, clean it, and even then when you're done with the paint filling, you sand it up, there's still plenty of, of room there to make it really nice. So let me get back to cleaning this up, and then I'll put this all up on the uh, counter here so we can all see it, because I got the little handheld video working today. And when I sand it, I may or may not go all the way. It has some nice bluing to it, so I probably will. If not, I could leave some of the black in there for the rustic look. It all depends. And if you notice this knot right here, there's actually sap coming out of it from the heat when the heat gun heated it up. There's a bunch of sap, so that's going to get in the way when I sand it. But, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, boys and girls, here is the finished product. We got it all sanded up, and you can see the nice bluing on there of the uh, natural wood discoloration. And if you look real close, let me turn off this heater a minute. Where is a pointer? Here we go. If we look really close, uh, you can see some of the cracks uh, did in fact still have some paint in them but instead of keep on sanding I think it's kinda cool I think it adds to the you know, rustic effect of the piece 
and there's a scratch here so it must have got hit with a utility knife or something so all kinds of cool things show up when you put the paint on there so there you go there's our little piece i went ahead and engraved the back as well put the logo at the top and um i'm starting to label these i don't know if this is in focus i really gotta set this camera up differently next time because i can't see what i'm doing but if it's not in focus, I'll have pictures and I'll edit pictures in here of still shots. But it says no wood left behind, number 16. So I'm starting to number all my pieces. And the U.S. Constitution is small. So it's my little title for it. And uh, I'm going to work on reaching out to the Wounded Warrior Project people or uh, some other kind of organization that maybe supports families of missing soldiers, something like that. And I don't know how they do it, so I gotta reach out and find out if they want it yearly, quarterly, monthly, but anytime I sell one of these uh, for the No Wood Left Behind series, I'm gonna donate all of those sales to one of those organizations. So keep a, I guess I say keep updated, but that doesn't make sense. Stay tuned. Um, because there will be a spot specifically for that on the channel that will display all those uh, all those pieces. I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, video every one of them being made, but at least I'll have them up there and display each one. So, um, I also have this one. It's on the same kind of wood, and I'm going to do that at the same process. It's a reaper with a weapon and uh, I didn't put any words on this one because sometimes you just don't need any of the words so we're gonna do this one all black and I have this one those pieces were the pine and this one's a lot heavy and some more dense this is cherry it's a nice piece of uh what is that an inch right about inch thick cherry and this uh not quite as deep but it is a wonderful engraving. And I'll try to get a picture of it. But these lines are nice and sharp. It's cherry engraved so great. It's a nice golden or dark brown color. I think what I'm going to try to do with this one is either mask off all of the words and the weapon. Or just mask off the cordless and make it blue. I'm going to put some different color in there. I have white. Um, but the white doesn't really look good to me. I tried it a few times and I don't, I don't like it. I might try it again on something else, but not this piece. Um, this is, it's a really beautiful cherry. I love this wood. And, uh, so I'm going to do the gun in black and the words in black and this cordless thing. I think I'll do that in blue. So we'll do that now. So I think we should honestly do the black first and then the blue or, yeah because if I try to do the blue first and I have to mask the blue for the entire process of the black and it's such a small area it could peel off or whatever so let's just mask off that Now the grip looks good, the slide looks good, all those thick lines look real good. What I was kind of hoping for is to get really good distinct lines around the trigger and the trigger guard because I don't feel they were as dark as they could have been, especially compared to the other thicker areas. So that's kind of what I was going for. And the reason for the second coat 
Obviously, we won't be able to tell until we sand it if it was successful in that mission. Some of you might be wondering too, is like, man, you only charge five dollars for those? Uh, some of them are five bucks, some of them are ten bucks. I think I had one that was fifteen because it was a large piece. It really depends on the size of the piece, but these are not about making money on. These are more about just getting something out there, uh, getting a few bucks, and you're sending out an advertising piece basically. And now, if I'm going to be donating them to Wounded Warrior and those and those outlets there, um. You know, it's not about that. I mean, I could raise the price a little bit just to make sure they get enough money. Because at five bucks, yeah, I'm not really helping anybody. But, you know, anything is, any donation is good. So, I'm sure that those entities don't care if it's a hundred dollar donation or a hundred thousand dollar donation. They just like any donations. But, um, the point is, these are just fun for me to do. And I don't, I mean, why would you throw away a nice piece of wood, right? So... Um, these are fun, and I don't do them often. I do them in between when I'm not terribly busy or I'm bored. <clears throat> I'm spending this much time on it today for obvious reasons. We're doing a video and trying to uh, do a tutorial out of it. So normally I don't always paint fill them either. Sometimes I just engrave and go on these. So it's not like I spend this much time on them. So they're not profitable like this. It's not supposed to be profitable like this. It's just something I do for fun. When you do a large piece uh, or a real regular project, then yeah, we're going to have to price it accordingly because, as you can see, it takes a lot of time. Right? Now, it doesn't have to take a ton of time if you learn how to simplify and streamline your process and it doesn't have to take a long a lot of time. <laughs> Use my built in air compressor. My mouth. Pretty happy with that. We see the area around the word cordless is opposite engraved. So that will be a backfill of the blue. But the black and the pistol are pretty nice. And you can see there's not much room left. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but I can see there's. You can see where the sandpaper started hitting uh, the ink. So. Those uh, little edges will go away once you stain it, but there's not much more room for sanding on there before you start sanding away the black. That's why when you are doing this, you always want to go nice and deep, but the area around the trigger guard, the trigger guard looks good, so I'm happy with that. Let's do blue. We're gonna leave that one a little thick because it did uh, it did go down quite a bit in that first go around. So again, these things are not going to be the same like every time. The overall concept is the same, but you're gonna want to pay attention and see how it acts and reacts, and then adjust accordingly. So I noticed that one got shit, that one got runny really quick and it also sunk down pretty far and pretty quick so knowing that i went ahead and left a lot on the top and we're back to the phone now the other one died i guess i uh ran it out of power 
I did make a little bit of room on the phone, so we've got enough to do this. She's good and liquid, so we're gonna have to let that cool. So uh, I'm gonna let that cool for a minute and then um, sand it up and come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so I was working on this one, and this is the second coat, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this since I have to use the phone because the other thing's charging. But let's see if this will, I want you to see how fast this, this is the gloss. I went ahead and said, you know what, let's go ahead and try the gloss out. So, because um, the blue gloss came out really nice, but I want you to see how fast this turns to liquid. The other one didn't do it. The matte doesn't do this. So I find that interesting. And once it starts changing, hopefully the camera picks it up. Definitely gonna make it harder to sand. But look at that. Look how fast that's changing over to liquid. You definitely gotta move around and keep on top of that because it will boil on over. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Alright, so let me finish this up and then I'll sand it and show you what it looks like. Alright boys and girls, that's going to conclude it for uh, the powder paint with the uh, little sample pieces. Here's how the Grim Reaper turned out. I went ahead and tried the gloss, and as you can see, it uh, is shiny. And as you can hear in the background, the kids are going crazy, so it's almost dinner time, and we're about done. So, here's a close-up. I want you to see how shiny that gloss is. Right, the far away look looks fine, right? But when you get up on it, and there's some light, and you hit the light weird, it does that. So, I mean, that's not terrible. You know, somebody might like it. One thing I learned a long time ago is don't always make things that I like. Make things that people might like. So somebody might like that. But there you go. So there's one more piece for the No Wood Left Behind series. I will add that. Um, we're going to do the tractor another day because that's going to take a lot of work. So um, here's what we did today for this video for the powder paint. Just to quick little recap where did Jesus go oh, oh there he is all right, my other camera is still charging so all right well there we go there's our our four pieces and oh you know what I didn't stain them I got busy so like I said there's no real point in doing that on the camera I will um, I will stain them and then add still shot pictures to the video here at the end so you can see what they look like stained. Uh, there is a difference, trust me, especially with these. The uh, bluing really pops out and, you know, the cherry looks beautiful stained. So. Man, that blue really did come out well. I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty cool. Alright, so there you go, guys. That's how to do powder paint. And um, we used the Falcon, uh, Creality Falcon 2, 40 watt, uh, to cut these and um, the engravings with the precise mode. So, cool. If you like what you see and uh, you want to help the channel, you can um, click the like and the subscribe button. And if you want one of those uh, lasers, I have an affiliate link that will also be in the comments below. So, yeah. <coughs> Alright. Uh, yeah. We're done. See ya.